In this video, we're going to look at finding the gradient of a curve at a given point. We looked at some examples where we had y as a function of x. dy by dx gave us the gradient function. So if we wanted to find the gradient at a given point on the curve, we would differentiate y with respect to x. And all we would do to find the gradient at a given point is simply substituting an x-coordinate. In this video, we're going to just work through some examples and look at finding the gradient at a given point or questions very similar. So let's start off with the first one. Question five, it says find the gradient of a curve at the given point. So we're looking at the gradient of a tangent at a given point. So let's start off with the first one. Y is equal to x squared plus x. What I'm going to do is just draw this just to have some idea of what's going on. So this is going to give us a parabola. It's a quadratic and it's going to look something like so. So we'll have the point now negative 1 and 0. So the parabola will come round and it'll do something like this. And it'll come up and do that. So this is our standard parabola. We've got negative 1 and we've got 0. What it's asking me to do is simply take this point just here and ideally we would need it a bit further along but just show you roughly what we're going to have and we're going to find now the gradient of the tangent at that given point just there where x is going to be equal to 3. So the gradient function is dy by dx. So all I'm going to do is differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. On the left I'll have dy by dx and I'm just going to write this in simplest terms or simplified form we're going to have 2x plus 1. If that doesn't mean anything to you, please go back and watch the videos prior to this as I've done that fairly quickly. So at x is equal to 3, the x coordinate, so let's just put that here. Again, my scale isn't very good, it's just I'd go off if I didn't have that. At x is equal to 3, we can say dy by dx, the gradient function, will be 2 lots of 3 plus 1. That's going to give me now on here 6 plus 1, which is 7. So that's a gradient. Clearly, now, as the values of x increase, that is going to get steeper and steeper. As it decreases now down to 0, it's going to end up getting flatter and flatter. We see at this point here, we would have now a tangent that was, had a 0 gradient, and we call that a stationary point. And then for values, the other side of that stationary point, our gradient would be negative. OK, let's do the next one. Y is equal to 2, so 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus x. And we need this at x is equal to 1. So gradient function dy by dx, 6x squared minus 6x plus 1. Again, check with your teacher or your examining board exactly the level of work you may want to show. That is me being uh, fairly simplistic. So at x is equal to 1, we can say that dy by dx, the gradient of that curve at the point where x is 1, will be 6 lots of 1 squared, which is going to give me that. 6 lots of 1, and then we're going to have plus 1. So that is going to give me a gradient of 1. So I've simply evaluated the gradient of a cubic function at the point where x is equal to 1. Let's do the last one. So we've got y is equal to x to the fifth. So this is a quintic equation minus x to the fourth plus three. That means our derivative is going to be a quartic. We need it at x is negative two. So dy by dx, the gradient function, multiplying down by the power and dropping the power by one, multiplying down by the power and dropping the power by one. And we've got a constant, so that will give me zero. So we can say now at x is equal to negative 2, dy dx, the gradient of the curve at that given point, will be 5 lots of negative 2 to the power 4, which is 16. And then we're going to subtract from that 4 lots of negative 2 to the power of 3, which is going to give me now negative 8. So that's going to give me, what's that, 112? What's that, 50, 80? 80, 80 plus 32 which is 112. So we can see at that particular point now, the quintic equation is going to have a gradient of the tangent, which is incredibly steep. I've simply substituted in now x is negative 2 and evaluated. So nice and straightforward. Remember, gradient function, 
differentiate it so we get the gradient function and simply sub in the x coordinate. We won't always be dealing with functions where we have y as a function of x, we might have s as a function of t. In that case ds dt would be the gradient function and you would sub in values of t. Okay, given uh, it says on here find g dashed of 4 given that g of x is equal to 2x to the 1 half. This is similar to f of x, so I've just now put g of x. So we need g dashed of x, and then this is telling me to evaluate 4. So what we've got then is g of x is going to be 2x to the power of 1 half. So g dashed of x, the first derivative, in the same way we looked at f dashed of x, we multiply down by the power, which is going to give me 1, and drop the power by 1. So 1 half minus 1 is going to give me x to the minus 1 half. I'd actually prefer to write this as 1 over the root of x. You don't have to. These things now, using the rules of indices and thirds, we see that the root of x is equal to x to the 1 half time and time again. So what I'm now going to say, I'll write therefore, we can say that g dashed of 4, all this is telling me to do is substitute in 4 for x. It's going to be 1 over the root of 4, which is going to give me now 1 over 2. So... Find g dash to 4, that's going to give me now 1 over 2. If we just look at this, all I'm going to do is sketch this up. So what we've got then is 2 root x. So if I draw some coordinate axes and draw the graph, g of x is equal to now 2 root x. This looks something like so. So it will do something like this. So what we've got then is this point right here. And it's asking me now to find the gradient at the point now on here where this is going to be 4. If I drew a tangent to the curve at that point where we just touched it, it's telling me now at that point here what we've got at that point is going to be now m is going to be equal to 1 half. So nice and straightforward, we've got this function and then we can write g dashed of 4 gives us now 1 half. Okay, question 7, it says find the points on the curve y is equal to 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x, where the gradient is 21. So this time we're finding where a gradient is 21 rather than evaluating the gradient. So what we want then is the gradient function. So dy by dx will be equal to 21. That's what it's telling me. So it's telling me this time the gradient is equal to 21. So therefore what we can write is that 21 is equal to Differentiating now, we're going to have 6x squared minus 12x plus 3. So all I've done is differentiated y with respect to x. So if I just set now the left-hand side to 0, I've got 6x squared minus 12x. Subtracting 21, that's going to give me now minus 18. We can divide by 6x squared minus 2x and then we're going to have a uh, minus 3. That looks like it's going to factor. We'll have x minus 3 and then x plus 1. So on here what we've got then is that x would be equal to 3 and we've got x is equal to negative 1. Okay, it says the points. Therefore I need to find the y coordinate. So let's now uh, sub in 3. So y is going to be 2 lots of 3 cubed, which is 27, minus 6 lots of 3 squared, which is 9, and then plus 3 lots of 3, so writing that in, uh, 3 lots of 3, that's what we get. So what's that going to be? 54, so 54 minus 54 plus 9. So we can say then x is equal to 3, and we've got y is equal on there to 9. So that would give me the point now 3, 9. And then if we substitute in now negative 1, y is equal to 2 lots of negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, minus 6 lots now of negative 1 squared, which is just going to be 1. And then we're going to have plus 3 lots of negative 1. So negative 2, then we're going to subtract 6, and we're going to subtract 3. That looks like it's going to give us now, uh, what have we got, negative 11. So uh, y is equal to, so y is equal to negative 11, so we've got negative 1, negative 11. 
that is where the gradient to that function is going to be 21. Okay, question 8. Find the gradient of a tangent of a curve s is equal to 4t cubed minus 1 over 3 root t at the point now 1 comma 11 thirds. So what we want is ds dt. ds dt will be the gradient function and all I need to do is substitute in t is equal to 1. So let's just write s. s is equal to 4t cubed minus 1 third and this now the root of t in the denominator will be t to the negative 1 half. So ds dt, the gradient function, multiplying down by the power and dropping the power by 1, that's going to give me 12t squared. Multiplying down, that's going to give me 1 over 6. Then we're going to subtract a power, so that's going to be to the negative 3 over 2. Fortunately, we're only evaluating 1 here, so these, uh, these powers here are essentially irrelevant. So what we can say at t is equal to 1, ds dt, the gradient of the tangent to the curve at that given point, is going to be 12 lots of 1 and then plus 1 over 6 lots of 1. So what's that going to give me? 70, 73 over 6, um, a quick guess. So 6 times by 12 is 72. So 73 over 6. So I'll just leave that as a uh, an, a top heavy uh, fraction. So all we've done is simply differentiated the function. S is now here a function of t. We've substituted in the coordinate, the t coordinate here. The uh, s coordinate is uh, irrelevant in the actual uh, computation of the, the, the gradient. Okay. Question 9. Find the point where the tangent to the curve y is equal to 1 third x cubed minus 1 half x squared minus 12 x plus 3, where x is greater than 0, is parallel to the x-axis. If we just consider this now, what's, let's just draw this up. If we have a tangent to uh, uh, parallel to the x-axis, it's going to look something like that. Parallel to the x-axis means that dy by dx is going to be equal to 0. So what we can say then is dy dx is equal to 0, so if parallel. So what I'm going to do is write this. Therefore, what we can say is 0 is equal to. Differentiating this, multiplying down by the power, that's going to give me 1x squared. All I've done is multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. This is going to give me minus 1x and then we're going to get now minus 12. That looks like it factors. That's going to give me x minus 4, and then x plus 3 is equal to 0. So from this, we can say x is equal to 4. This is only defined now for x greater than 0. x cannot be equal to negative 3 as x greater than 0. So all I need to do now is substitute in the x coordinate here. So y is going to be equal to uh, 4 to the power of 3, which is 64. 64 over 3. Minus now, we've got um, 4, to, 4 squared. Um, so that's going to be minus 8. Then we're going to have now minus 48. So minus 48. And then we're going to have now plus uh, plus 3. So what's that going to give me? y is equal to 64 over 3. So that's minus 56, minus 50. So what's that going to give me? Minus 53 in total. Uh, we need to combine these, so let's finish this. So y is going to be equal to 64 minus, that's going to be 159, and that's going to be over 3. So all we need to do at this stage is work that out and simplify the fraction. So what's that going to give me? Negative 95 over 3. So let's just go ahead and do that. Y is equal to negative 95 over 3. Uh, generally speaking, this would be a calculator question. Um, uh, Non-calculator, sorry, but I will just use a calculator to do that. So let's put that in. So if we do our answer, let's just check I've got this right. Just answer cubed divided by... Uh, 3 um, minus now the answer squared divided by 2. Um, hopefully my maths has worked. Minus 
12 answer and then I think we had plus 3 didn't we was it plus 3 at the end let's hopefully give that at negative 95 over 3 so that's the, uh, the answer and that's the point where it's parallel to the x-axis so there are a few questions that we've looked at uh, looking at the gradient of a function at a given point or finding a point where the, the gradient is a certain value in this case it was zero and we solve now 4x and substitute it back in